On today's Visual Studio Toolbox, Kirill is going to show us how to use a tool to get more information from your builds than just succeeded or failed. Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me is Kirill Osinkoff. Hey, Kirill. Hello, good to be here. Kirill's a developer in Visual Studio land, and is coming back on the show. It's been, I looked this up, five years wow. <laughs> since you were on the show last. Nice so to be here again. Thanks it's for inviting me. It's way overdue to have you. And you're going to tell us about uh, some build tools you wrote, some, some ways we can find out more about what's going on with build. Right, right? exactly. So, you know, a developer like me, obviously I know there's build in there, and I know to build my projects and solutions, and I know that there's a lot of information scrolling by, and occasionally I look at it, but mostly I care about two things. Build succeeded, build failed, right? Right. So I miss build, build, right? So yeah. It's daunting. Like sometimes you feel this helplessness because there's a giant system in front of you and it doesn't behave the way you expect. So either a file doesn't get copied or a different version of a DLL or something is broken. You have no idea why and you're mm -hmm. in front of this black box system. And what do you do? What are the tools like to help you zoom in and understand the problem, see what's going on? Yeah. So basically, traditionally, MS Build has a logging uh, system and they, they produce a large amount of logs, but mostly they're text logs. And for multi-proc builds, basically, imagine 10 people in the room chatting at the same time, mm -hmm. different nodes logging different mm -hmm. things. And so you see, well, this is doing this, but now I'm getting distracted by this node, but then I'm back here, but who started this? And I have no idea. And then there's this chunk of text that I don't need at all, right? So I want to collapse it, move it away. So there's no structure, there's no help, there's no... And so sometimes they would log too much, but at the same time, not the information that I want. Right. So something had to be done. Uh -huh. And after, uh, you know, some amount of misery, I said enough <laughs> is enough. So let's uh, build some tooling for it yeah. to make it better. So. Cool. So there's uh, two things. The MS Build itself has a new log format called the binary log, a short bin log. And uh, it basically is a recording of exactly what happened during the build. Mm -hmm. Very detailed, very rich, very organized and structured. And so it captures kind of like Here's what happened. You can play it back. You can play the log back, and then you'll see the same yeah. output that would happen okay. during the regular build, right? And so it's a compressed, efficient binary format that's good, but now you need a viewer for it because uh, it's not text anymore, right? And so uh, I wrote a viewer. It's called the MS Build binary and structured log viewer, but basically just the bin log viewer. Okay. And it really uh, gives you the insight on what's happened during that build what files were involved, what were the environment variables, what were the properties. So, in fact, uh, a warning that we uh, like to give people is that it contains your environment variables. So they have secrets, they have passwords, so treat those bin logs uh, very carefully okay. because they have some stuff in it. So, but yeah, uh, it's uh, been very helpful. People use it, uh, it's been real nice to let's see this. Let's see it in action. Yeah, so mm, the first thing you do you go to msbuildlog.com, this website mm -hmm. has everything you need to know about, you know, uh, the logging, what it is, how to use it, how to obtain a bin log, how to play it back, how to view it. And so to download the viewer, just click the green button and uh, the experience uh, needs some improvement, but basically you download this file and uh, the end, just click this button, run anyway. The viewer gets installed, and here uh, there's also some documentation on how to use it on the command line. You, on the command line, you just type msbuild, your solution, and then slash bl is the special okay. magic switch that after the build is done, you'll see a new file, bin log file here, and then you can double click on it to open in the viewer. Yeah. And this is how wow. the viewer looks like, so I'm going to go here and um, you have two choices here. You can either just build a new uh, a project or a solution, mm -hmm. or you can open a recording, that bin log file that you have from somewhere else. So if it was built on CI or on some another machine, you're helping is a friend. It, so. Is it any project? WinForms, uh, UWP, Xamarin, Anything you web, can build with them as build. You can build. Okay. Anything you can build with them as build. So cool. you open a solution, you can select which MS build are you going to use to build it, and you can pass, for example, slash R here, or additional parameters 
Uh, for example, this is for multi-proc build, and this time I'm going to do the rebuild target. And yeah, mm -hmm. you can co copy the command line to clipboard, so you can just uh, run it yourself. But you click a button, and now it just calls into MS build with that BL flag, and it's recording as you go. Okay. So there is some overhead in terms of performance. It's going to make your build slightly slower but just because it's capturing so much more useful information. Okay. So it's not a lot. And this is what you get when you open it up. And this is exactly the same what you see if you open a, a bin log file. So that's the bin log viewer here. On the left, we have the pane where we can search for stuff. And so yeah. give us an overview of what we're looking at. Yes. So um, build succeeded. That's good. <laughs> yeah, you see the green one, build <laughs> succeeded. And then um, the tree, the main thing in here is the tree. It's a tree of the build, and now it's organized not in a single linear you know, wall of text, a million lines of uh, uh, text. It's okay. a, a tree, uh, and you can see the most important thing is this solution is building. Here are the projects that we're building. Mm -hmm. And inside the project, you will see uh, you know, targets running. Inside the targets, you see other targets. Um, Let's see, there's tasks, and the tasks have parameters, and they folders, and output items, and so on. Okay. So now that you have all this rich goodness, you can search. So for example, if you want to see where the C-sharp compiler ran, so you search for task, uh, and then you narrow it down to CSC. And now you see, well, this is where the C-sharp compiler was invoked. Okay. So there's parameters. Here's what exactly what was passed to the compiler. Here's the references, and you can Click on the reference, you can copy, you can sort them, so it's easier to navigate, right? And mm -hmm. here's all the metadata, here's all the sources. So pretty much, uh, uh, it's exactly what happened during the build, but it's not text. So search is, um, I've built a few things here, so you can search for, you know, types of nodes that you care about. For example, you only want to look for errors. Here's, there's no errors in this build, right? Or warnings, or properties, or items. And then mm. I've built some useful, Examples, for example, when you see why did the file get copied or why did it not get copied, right? So you search for copying file from. So you see this is where misbuild is copying file. So you can narrow it down to a DLL and you can further narrow it down to, you know, logger.dll. And so now you, you start narrowing it down to exactly what you want. Mm -hmm. And then the common problems that you see as uh, Resolve assembly references, so you see where things are resolved, where is it copied, or there was a conflict. This is a common thing where you just have a conflict, you don't know what to look for. Right. Right? Encountered con why, why is this building again? I just built it. Nothing has changed. Why is it building again? Why is it doing work? Right? So it's called building her mentality, and it is uh, uh, very useful to search for these exact strings to see, aha, this is building completely. Why? Because it says, well, this file that you expected does not exist. So uh, you want to uh, ser uh, search for these things. Or, uh, for example, property reassignment. This is when a property had one value that mm -hmm. was assigned a new value. So you know what, cha what changed it and who changed it and when. And so here in the tree, you see it's, um, and if it's too long, you can press space, and it's going to show exactly where this happened. So this is a powerful oh. tool. You can see the source code for everything. It records the source code for all projects and all the imported files that were uh, used during the build. And mm -hmm. then you can go to the source code and yeah, so there's more. I mean, yeah, so how would I, I mean, it's interesting to, to get a better sense of what's going on in the build, but how would I use it for troubleshooting in general? And how much am I expected to know what's happening in the first place right. in order to be able to go drill into what might have happened. Right. Well, for starters, if you have an error or something, you just have some text to search for. Just start, try searching for that text. It's always okay. a good first step. And then you do need to understand pretty much how MSBuild works. And MSBuild is a generic system for interpreting a project. It can import other projects. And then when it evaluates, it's done evaluating, then it constructed a target graph where mm -hmm. targets need other targets to build. So Targets, it's like functions call other functions. Targets can build other targets. And then inside the target, just like inside the function, you have statements, right? Inside the target, you have tasks. And the tasks is as a unit of actually doing work. Like CSC is a task to run the C-sharp compiler. Mm -hmm. 
to convert a source code to a DLL file. Right, so inside the tasks, you know, you pass them parameters and then you can drill deeper and deeper, but pretty much once you understand this, and then you have the initial understanding of what kind of problem are we facing, you'll be able to search. So if a build succeeded, would this help me find problems that were in there, Great even though question. the build succeeded? Yes, so for example, I'll show you a problem right here with this very build. At the very end, it's a double write. A double write is when this file was written to from two different source locations. So uh, first okay. someone wrote this file from that location and then someone else randomly overwrote the file with something else. And depending so by on someone you mean some process. Both of these, yeah, they were part of the build. Okay. So different parts of the build are racing are competing to see and depending on the order in multiproc systems then you can either get uh, lucky or okay. you will get unlucky. And so this shows you exactly what is a problem. It's a double write and then you can just search for, you can copy this and search for this exact file and see where it's being copied from. So you can go and search for copying file. So this is exactly the place where this one is getting copied, see? Mm -hmm. So it turns out the copy files marked as copy local, taking it from NuGet. So you know what's this happening. And so you need to determine well, one of them shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. So then you resolve all your double errors. So this is an example of an so, analyzer, right? So now what would I do with that information? I'm finding that there's two different versions of that package. And yeah. I want one versus the other. So usually How do I stop the one or Right. So usually the next step is you look at the project. Mm -hmm. Here's you can view the source code. Here's the source code of the project. Okay. And you see here's the package reference. Here's this version. Uh, okay. The results out. and there from here you can reason. And now one thing that um, there is um, uh, yellow text here mm -hmm. that I wrote. People never read it, but I wrote it so, <laughs> so that they read it. And once they read it, they'll learn that there's this uh, very useful feature uh, where you can click on a project and say pre-process. So what this does is it basically inlines all of the imported projects, importing other projects. There's a giant graph, a tree of projects, and mm -hmm. just in, and makes how MS build sees it. It's flattened. It's one giant XML file. This is exactly what MS Build sees when it builds. Okay. And so you can search here for, for example, where did it run the C Sharp compiler? So, for example, at this point it ran CSC at line 20,000. So, okay. and then you can see the ordering of the, uh, property assignment is important because sometimes you would set a property and wonder, well, why I'm setting it but nothing's happening. Turns out someone else later is setting this to a different value. So, you need to use search to figure out, well, who was the last person to set it? So, yeah, and with, would uh, you then you can't edit this file here to make things happen the way you want, can you? Uh, you can click open here. It'll open it in your fi uh, oh. favorite editor of your choice, okay. and then you go there and you edit, and then you kind of rebuild and see what's happening then. Okay. Okay. So now one other big thing is that when you're inside of Visual Studio, you're building inside Visual Studio. You see the output window, mm -hmm. and you have. How do you investigate those? Right. There is the an extension. Uh, called Project uh, System Tools that you can install to Visual Studio 2019 and it will have a record button and it'll record these logs for design time build and regular builds and mm -hmm. then you can just inspect them just like you do now. It's very convenient to understand. So it builds the same uh, bin log and yes, you exactly look at right. it the exact same way. Because when you build in the IDE in Visual Studio, it's slightly different from building in the command line. Oh, okay. So in the command line, you just pass slash BL and you obtain a bin log. When you're inside the Visual Studio, you need the Visual Studio extension project system tools, which is probably a topic for a whole other <laughs> video like this. Okay. But uh, people need to know that uh, there are now tools to inspect both the command line builds, and you can do it on CI, and you can attach it as an artifact on the CI, and then inside mm -hmm. the Visual Studio. And so common problems like you see uh, incrementality where things are rebuilding where nothing has changed, double writes, non-deterministic builds, you know, files getting copied to the output where you don't want them or mm -hmm. vice versa. They aren't getting copied and you expect them. So all things like this. So you could use this then potentially as an opportunity to investigate why it builds and runs correctly on your machine, but not potentially on someone else's Precisely. or maybe not on a build server somewhere. Usually right? there's a dependency on environment. On this yeah. particular machine, you take uh, this environment variable or you end up resolving this DLL file from the GAC or some other local location right. and things are not repeatable. So 
uh, reproducible, repeatable, built or hermetic. They're isolated from the environment as much as possible. And mm -hmm. they bring everything they need with them. They bring in their SDK, they bring in the NuGet packages, they lay it all down exactly and then they build it. And then you can reproduce byte by byte the same uh, builds on a different machine. And then you'll never have this problem. So okay. this is our, you know, the goal. Cool. Yeah, I guess uh, just uh, one quick, yeah. maybe two or just one more sure. minute of the features here, the, here's all the files used during the build, and you can search, for example, you know, for here's the full text of this file, for example, mm -hmm. and um, you can find, uh, do textual search, you can search in all these files. So here's, for example, where C Sharp compiler is called. Okay. And uh, as I said, right click menu, it's very important. You can search in this subtree. You can view the subtree text. You can save the log as XML, and then you can do further processing mm. on it. There's an API to read and write these ones. And you can like delete the stuff you don't care about. For example, I know this is, just get it out of the way, right? And oh. so there's various tricks, and I encourage, there's, for example, the timeline view where you can see like what happened here. Like this only took like okay. 271 milliseconds, but this long thing took like nine seconds, right? Okay. And so at the very end, there's also the summary of like top 10 most expensive tasks. So you can optimize your builds. Like I know oh. the C Sharp compiler here took the most. So I encourage people to like dig deeper and just try to, you know, explore. And this is a tool that basically opens up the MS Build black box to kind of help you understand and solve the problems that I know yeah. people have problems. So it's good to learn. Cool. And thanks. Very so. cool. Okay. Uh, so we'll have links in the show notes on where to get it, um, some documentation, uh, and then there, I saw that the source is up there. And it's GitHub open source on GitHub. People yeah. can, can yeah, look yeah. at. Yeah, we welcome okay. contributions, and people send PRs, and I'm very grateful for the help right. that I get. So. Cool, very cool. So, great. hope you guys enjoyed that brief look at this. Uh, play around with it, um, and let us know what questions you have. We can think about what to do as maybe a follow-up episode or something. So we can introduce it here and then dive in in the future. Thank you so much. All right. Hope you enjoyed that. We will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.